How are you? It is Wednesday, Katie, and I know the days of the week because I'm a genius. Yes, that you are, babe. Um, yesterday was the Scottishes, uh, the day before was the Americans. Uh, we're going to bring it home to the Irish today. Well, Irish-ish of sorts. So there's a lot of bottles there that have been influenced by uh, uh, around the world. Uh, start off up the top. And one of the things that we often get asked about, what makes an 88 so collectible or so rare, so expensive, in 89, all these sort of things. 88, 89, the country was in recession. We were broke. I mean, you know, at the time it was 40, 50 euro for a bottle of Middleton when you were buying a bottle of Powers or Paddy for nine, eight, nine euros pound, pound at the time. Nobody was spending money no. ben, was buying, that was nearly a week's wage as, as nearly a bottle of whiskey is these days as well. But I mean, nobody was spending money. And then the next then is 09. So 09, we just had the crash in 08. The world was on its knees again. There was nobody spending money. Production numbers of the 09 were sort of, you know, Middleton had, as I often say to people, people talk about, you know, Middleton and their planning. Middleton don't just decide this year, oh, we're going to do a Middleton very rare next year. They have it oh, no, years yeah. in the plan. So they've got the, the, the boxes and, and the bottles and the casks and all that yeah. pulled and, and ready to go. They mightn't have the exact makeup of it. I, I see that they're talking about Kevin putting together this year's one, but I'm sure Kevin has that done a while back. But here's one of the things that just shows how hey, nerdy, you nerdy, are. Yeah, nerdy I am as well. So this is the 2010 release. But on the front of the box, and this is I've seen this on a few of them, it's actually covered over 09. And if you get the light right, you can actually see 2009. So they obviously had the boxes and the plaques on made, yeah. weren't selling as many as they went and went, oh, what are we going to do? And redone them. So they're a 2010, but you can see it on the 09. So that's a rare thing as well. Even that in its own entity, you know, is, is a bit of a thing. Now, you want to be a complete nerd, you know, to... And another thing, this 700 and 750 mil thing is getting on my oh, it's wick. getting on mine too. Uh, there's no difference. I would be more impressed. And actually, I want to put the call out. Does anybody anywhere in the world have a full 750 mil collection? Yeah, that'd be cool. That would impress me more. Yeah. Because you can't have a full 700 mil set. Because from 84 until 89, it they were all 750, 750 anyhow. So people sort of, and usually the people that are saying, oh, they're worth less, is usually the fellas that's looking to buy it. And anybody who's saying it's worth more are usually the fellas who's looking to sell it. <laughs> so that's how it goes. So ignore that. Showing how big Irish whiskey has become. I mean, we have had the, the thanks a million in the, in the person. Uh, well, so one million, two million and three million. This was last year's one. I think it was last year's 2021. There you go. 9 million cases sold in 2021. So this is the thanks a 9 million that's been done for uh, the Fox and Geese team over there. And again, 1 million cases bottled at Fox and Geese in July 2021. A million cases in one month. That's huge. And it just shows the strength of Irish whiskey. Speaking of Jameson... <clears throat> So we have some unicorns. I can't call them unicorns. Oh. Unicorns is played out. Everybody hard to find bottles. I yeah, think is don't. the best way to describe yes. these. Kelso. So Kelso, mm. the cask mates, uh, is a fairly uh, huge collection actually because they've got uh, collaborations from all over the world. Yeah, they they've yeah. they've really got some good ones. France and England and Australia and other places. Here's Kelso. That's from Brooklyn. That's where Tim lives now. Yes. That's right. I know that. Uh, that's Kelso Pale Ale. That's a uh, Jensen castmates from Kelso. The Great Divide. Here it is. The Great Divide is the one that was in Colorado. Again, I don't think anybody copped it at the time when it was released in Colorado. I think it was a, a $25 bottle of whiskey. It should go a bit more than $25, I think, would be a fair yeah. assessment. Uh, Angel City is from Los Angeles. And Captain Lawrence is from Canada. So there's four of the real, real hard ones to get. Again, there's very few guys that I know of that have a full castmates collection. A lot of people have the majority of them and are perhaps missing one or two of these real yeah. hard to find ones. And there is four of the most sought after. Um, wanted to talk about the Redbreast single cask because as it sort of 
eking out into the ether now. Uh, they're coming to an end, per se. The customer-based ones that uh, a lot of these guys have. So you have the Palace Bar, Temple Bar, yeah. we've the recent Friends of Middleton one, all that. There's a good selection of them in this month. There's yeah, a good line of them across there them. as well. Uh, that one was done for our friend Willie in the Palace Bar. 59.7%. Um, they're coming to an end. They're really going to be something in the future for collectors to have as well. Uh, beside that, Roberto is a fouillet cask. That is the one that was done for the whiskey shop in London. 160, 164, 168, 168 bottles only. Um, they initially, when they came out and hit the auctions initially, they went bananas. I've seen some of them. I think one of them in the UK went for nearly two grand. Uh, they've eased off. The demand hasn't been there. People have sort of struggled a wee bit recently with the Causeway collection and that, but I still think it's going to be one for the future. You're standing and grinning at me. You laughing about my comment? No. Can I, I say it? No. I can't. No, you can't. It's like a North Korean war general. Look at it, with the medals hanging out the front of it. Now, there's nothing wrong with North Korea. We like North Korea. Do we? Never been to North Korea, but we don't like it. Uh, Thomond Gate, Nick Ryan in... I'm, <laughs> in no, I'm just Thomond standing Gate. here smiling because... I'm just, I'm just yapping, yapping, yapping. Will you do it? No, I don't want to do it. What do you want? Oh, I'm of knowledge, go on. I don't fuck all about these. <laughs> I had to look up the, 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 the last one. Uh, the Thomond Gate, they've actually been really, really well. And there's more releases than you believe out there. I think somebody's seen 10. Is it 10 bottles? That Nick is out. Wow. I think they're just about ready maybe to get their own category soon. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, wow. you wouldn't you wouldn't have thought no. it. Uh but he has, he's he's a huge collection and they come out in ones and twos. The most recent one that he brought out uh in collaboration with you got two medals on it. It's a proper three star general. Um it has the Thum and Gate and was done for the Waterford Whiskey Society and it's got a fairly substantial medal on that. That is I guess snazzy. It, it's snazzy. It is snazzy. I, I reckon I'd probably wear that around my neck, knowing me. <laughs> um, X Heather Peated Madeira Cask. There is a combination. It is a cask that came from Denmark mm-hmm. because it's a tip of the hat to the Vikings. Yeah. Yeah. With the red and the beard and shit. Uh, and the three lads. I don't know. Uh, Patrick Joseph and um, I don't think that's their names. The Viking lads. Yeah. I, don't, I think that could be it. No, don't um, think that's the names. Now. And John. There was a John. Definitely a John in it. But one of them was in. Uh, he was talking about one of them, and he was in Waterford, and it's a tip of the hat to them. The cask came from Stoning in Denmark, a great distillery in Denmark. They do some fantastic special edition releases. Yeah, they had the the, the, the ex Heather Peters thing. In yeah, the yeah, the Madeira cask. So it came back here, and it done that, and all that. So done. So that's uh, Nick's Nick. Tom and Gale. <laughs> we do love Nick, actually, yeah. Uh, Robert, a couple of them legacy bottles that we have in. Most months we're having a few of them now. Um, Corbett's is Cologne. So all for you, all you Cologne cult, not? No. Cult. Cult, not? Shara cults. <laughs> Go on, you Shara cults. Corbett's was the original uh, Cologne distillery and that's a 15 year old they are uh, popping up uh, every now and then yeah. but uh, they went mad that one two grand at one stage so that uh, should be a sought after bottle DWD Dublin Whiskey Distillery um, again from the old Jones's Road Distillery in Dublin um, they should be top price yeah. really are I mean it's a it's, it's a silent ghost distillery why aren't people losing their shit over that I really don't know. Uh, bottled by R&D McAllister in Belfast, who were one of the big players in Belfast yeah, at the time yeah. as well. Uh, and beside that, we have the Middleton single cast, the 24-year-old. The reason I threw that up is I've been saying for a while, I think they're seriously undervalued. I I, I think they're going to be, if if the, the, the powers and the, the red breasts and all the single cask customer bottles stop, I believe that they're going to, there's going to be more emphasis put onto the Mid- Middleton single casks. I think they're really, really going to go high. They never really have... They've always sort of struggled. And you have the old versions of them. Celtic Whiskey have curated some fantastic single cask yeah, releases. Yeah. Um, and have, like, I mean, 01s and 18-year-olds and 20-year-olds whiskies that weren't expensive for their price point, yeah. for what they were. Again, I mean... Some of them were, weren't much more than the middle and uh, very rare, but I mean, they, they really should kick on. 
So that's the ones I wanted to talk about. Tomorrow, what we're going to talk about is... Can I do my Japanese impression? No. Are you trying to get us in trouble? Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. So we're going to be doing the Japanese whiskey. Japanese whiskey tomorrow. We have a lorry load oh, of it. we do. We will. There is a lorry load of it in this one. And there's a lot of the age statement stuff, which is what everybody really, really wants. There's another two Tolman Gates there. And there's, I'm telling there's you if we, more right now. There's more right now as well. Yep. I'm telling you, if we lined them up, it would be like sort of Kim Jong-un having an old procession. You'd just walk past and give him the old goose stepping and all that sort of stuff. No? No. <sighs> okay, we're so I'm going to see if I can get some of the medals on the front of me T-shirt. We're so in trouble. Why? Kim Jong-un's not watching this. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I might send somebody to assassinate me. You probably paid him. But anyhow. We, we shall talk to you tomorrow. tomorrow. Tomorrow is... Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> That's right. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.